today's video, I take this bike, my 2020 Surly ice cream truck, up into the Colorado Rockies to ride the huge spring snow that we've amassed this year. Spring conditions can be some of the most challenging snow bike conditions, and that's because you're often experiencing warmer base temperatures, which can actually make the snow greasy, or as in this video where the temps are actually nice and cold, but there has definitely been some freeze-thaw cycle impacts to the snow. But these conditions are exactly where the ice cream truck excels, and that's because the conditions can be highly variable and unpredictable, especially when you throw in windblown sections of trail into the mix, as we have in this video. Even though generally speaking, I prefer a 27.5 inch wheel for most fat bike scenarios. And if you want more on that, I will link this video down below. There are definitely still times where a 26 inch wheel with a max volume five inch tire can really shine. I won't have a lot of talking or narration going on in this one. So enjoy as I get to the ride footage as I climb up to 10,500 feet. Nothing better than Monday freshies up in the mountains when there's nobody else around. This section here should be a good test because it's off camber. We've got a little bit of a windblown cover and some icy freeze thaw snow underneath. So this is exactly the kind of conditions that I love having the ice cream truck for. And then we're gonna do a little climbing and descending after that. We'll see how it handles it. It's just clawing through it. This will be another challenging section because of that big mound of snow. And again, further back to go, we got more windblown snow and a good two inches of overall snow. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not even sure where the trail is. Usually again, it's up toward the right. So I'll see if I can make that connection, and get up and over it. I'd be surprised if I can actually ride up that, but we'll give it a go. And I know I'll get questions about what air pressure I'm running. I am running the 26 by five inch Terrain Johnny Fives. I did review these recently and they're really great for these type of more extreme conditions. So far, they're not disappointing. Even though they're not studded, they're just clawing through all this stuff. As far as air pressure goes, I'm not really sure. I do have it set pretty low. As I've said before in my air pressure video, which I will link down below, I adjust my air pressure to the trail conditions, not to a PSI number. All right, let's give it a go. Well, I'm off trail. Actually, it looks like it goes to the left. Usually it goes to the right. Let's see what happens. The wind's kicking up. Too much drift. It's getting a lot deeper back here too. Let's see how much further we can go. 
it's significantly deeper right here. We'll see if it gets worse and worse. Hope the conditions even out and I can keep going back to the lake. Well, I did have to hike a bike about 20 yards because it was unrideable due to the drifting. I think here it looks like it'll be rideable back to the lake. Looks like the wind's actually cleaning off the snow here. Depositing back where you saw. I'm off trail. Well, wind's picking up, getting some on and off snow, clouds are kicking up. Wind's blowing so good, it's almost got my tracks completely covered. if a little momentum helps me get through this time. I had to uh, walk through most of this last time. But now I got a tailwind and my prior tracks might help me. This crash was actually totally avoidable. It was really me being distracted by trying to film that caused me to lose concentration. All I really needed to do in this scenario was drop my seat post and I would have easily stabilized things. But over to the down sloping side I went. They just passed another fat biker on an E fat bike. It should make the trail out even a little more rideable. Definitely want to stay in this firm part. You see that chunder over there and you're going to at least stop if not go down. so I can put down if I need. I might even get up and over this.
So if you found this video informative or entertaining, drop a like down below. It does really help out the channel. And if you want to continue to follow along with my fat adventure and mountain bike content, including coming soon a five-year review of this bike, subscribe now so you won't miss any of that. But lots more coming, so stay tuned. Thanks a lot and have a great day.